Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com, uh, NBA insider. Uh, he joined us. And, Kevin, I believe, if, if I'm correct, you are out there in the great Pacific Northwest in the Washington Husky area, correct? That is correct. I'm a UW alum, so I saw most of the Pac-12 games that Fultz played last year in person and then basically watched pretty much every game he played. Okay, so you've seen a lot of this kid. The guy that you saw for the first four games of his NBA career, does that resemble anything that you saw while he was at the University of Washington? In terms of his ability to get to the basket, yes. In terms of, obviously, the shooting, no. And the, then the fact that that has meant that he's driving into, you know, it seems like three or four guys in the paint each time because of the fact that defenses aren't respecting his ability to be with, beat him with the jumper, that's that's totally different and has taken away a lot of what makes him such a special player. So that's why, you know, whatever the situation is with his shoulder, uh, the Sixers got to get it figured out and get him healthy and, and in the right place mentally and, and able to beat teams with the jumper in it the free throw line yeah so for our listeners out there who are watching this guy really struggle i mean kevin he can't even shoot a free throw i mean his free throw um form it looks like shaquille o'neal trying to shot put balls up at the rim there i mean it's been terrible so from what you saw from him in college this is a guy that should be able to shoot the ball from the outside with success in this league yeah, I mean, I think his his free throw percentage at Washington, 65%, and then, you know, similar shooting in some of the, uh, you know, lower level competitions, high school, that sort of thing. Uh, that was a little bit of a question mark about him, whether he was going to be able to sustain the kind of three-point shooting we saw from him at UW, where he shot 41%. In his one season, uh, I was a little skeptical of that, but you know that that's more thinking. Okay, well maybe he's only you know an average three-point shooter or a little bit below average. Not not what we've seen. I mean that's you know again clearly nothing like he was not only at UW but at any point beforehand. Uh, do you notice a, a major change in his number one his free throw form? But we haven't seen him shoot the ball from the outside all that much to even make a judgment on that. But is it a noticeable change in his free throw uh, shot? Oh, without question. And, you know, uh, Mike Schmitz of ESPN Insider, one of our draft analysts, and I wrote about this yesterday. You know, Mike was the first person to point this out on Twitter after the Sixers' first practice that, hey, you know, this looks different than Fultz's shot has looked in the past. And at that point, it seemed like it was a little confusing, but it didn't seem like a big deal. And it's, it's just his form has continued to degrade from there. Um, when you saw this kid over his time at Washington, uh, was there any indication that his shot might be this big of an issue, or does it tell you that there's got to be something wrong with his shoulder? It, it tells me that there, you know, it's got to be something going on because of the fact that, yeah, no, it, there, there was no indication. Like I said, you know, there was maybe some reason to believe that he wasn't going to be a knockdown shooter, at least early in his career, but uh, nothing to su suggest that, you know, he, he would have such a hard time making shots or be so unwilling to even attempt them. Now, Kevin, uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com, NBA Insiders with us. You mentioned that he has been getting to the basket. He's getting a lot of his shots blocked. What do you attribute that to, and do you think that is something that um, – has to do with the fact that he that nobody thinks he's shooting jumpers. You know, it's an adjustment for all rookies when they come into the league because of the fact that they're facing a lot better help defense in the NBA than they're going to in college. And then also, you know, better, bigger athletes. You know, usually they've been able to finish just on the strength of their athleticism. And, you know, certainly that's something that uh, Lonzo Ball is experiencing in L.A. and Jason Tatum in Boston. All, all these players are going through that adjustment to various forms. But it, it does seem to be exacerbated for, with fault by the fact that he doesn't seem to be a threat from the perimeter. So, you know, yeah, I mean, teams are able to lay off him, and uh, then they're in position to contest when he does get to the basket, which he does because of the fact that, you know, he's got such a good first step. A lot of high hopes for this team, Kevin. They've uh, not struggled, uh, but the wins aren't there coming out of the gates. Uh, is it, you know, there's a lot of people here that are saying, well, wait, we were supposed to finally start winning. We're not seeing the wins. Uh, is it time to hit the panic button, or are you seeing some positive signs from this team uh, that maybe they're ready to come around and win some of these close ones? 
Well, yeah, I mean, you know, first off, the most important thing for the Sixers long term is to see Ben Simmons play as well as he has. And, you know, everything has translated from college basketball the way that you would have hoped if you were the Sixers drafting him number one last year. And, you know, that and Joel Embiid staying healthy are the the two most important things for the future of the franchise. But, uh, you know, above and beyond that, I... Uh, my projections using ESPN's real plus minus were a little lower on the Sixers this season than, you know, kind of the conventional wisdom that they'd have a chance to be 500 this year. And, and some of that concern I think probably has played out on the court. Uh, you know, the other aspect I think that's going to help them, you know, nobody paid much attention to this at the time. I mean, maybe, maybe people didn't feel it nationally. It didn't make much of a ripple, but when Rashawn Holmes went down with injury that uh, took down a key backup, a guy who played very well for them last season, especially with, you know, you know, yeah. Embiid's minutes restrictions and the fact that he's not going to play some back-to-backs, you know, you, you're going to need to have multiple centers capable of contributing. Yeah, um, when he gets back, but, you know, they've gone with Amir Johnson as the backup there. Uh, Jaleel Okafor seemingly out of the rotation. Uh, that that whole, you know, he, we saw him, Pete, what, we it, did the show in August, right? We were down at the Sixers Summer Shore Tour, and uh, he looked thin, thinner. He looked lean. He looked mean. He was ready to go. He was all excited that he dropped the weight and have some sort of a role, and now they say that they're not even going to use him in the rotation. Yeah, how, how puzzling is that they're going with, is it puzzling that they're going with Amir Johnson over Okafor? No, I mean, I, I think it's kind of what I expected, given the fact that, you know, with with M- Embiid is your future at that position. You just signed him to a five-year extension. Uh, you've got Holmes as a guy who can be a low-cost backup for you. I mean, I my expectation all along is that the, they would find a way to trade Julio Okafor sooner rather than later. And, you know, so if you're playing him, probably it's in the, the classic showcasing I- idea. Uh, hmm. You did see that, you know, that improved conditioning. It, it seemed to translate offensively from the very little I've seen of him, you know, so far this season. But defensively, I, I still don't think that's going to overcome the fact that his instincts is a is a help defender are not great. So Kevin Pelton, uh, again, you saw a lot of faults. You said you saw just about every one of his games at Washington. Uh, and, the, you know, obviously he's going to be shut down for at least uh, three games here. Uh, are you concerned, though? Are you concerned that he might not be the player that the Sixers thought they were getting at number one? I mean, you know, certainly to to see him go through this, you wonder sort of what this period is doing to his confidence in his outside shot because that's something that was never within question, you know, with him last year. He was very confident in his outside shot and had good reason to to be so. So, you know, I mean, if it's entirely a matter of just getting him healthy, then I I think that's going to happen at some point here. You know, he, he, he... the Sixers haven't been able to find any structural damage, so perhaps it is just a matter of getting him some time off the court to, to get that shoulder to 100%. Uh, the, the the way it affects him mentally, I think, is probably the, the larger concern to me going forward. Um, but, you know, if he's healthy and able to regain his shooting form, then this will, you know, probably pretty quickly be forgotten. Yeah, because uh, in your dealings with him, does he seem like a confident guy? Because one of the things I think – that he relied on so much was that pull-up jumper. You would see him, he uh, he would pull up and create such space between him and the defender. That was really what, you know, fueled his offensive game. And, that, and the fact that he can't do that, the confidence you wonder, you know, if it's lacking. But is he a guy that is confident uh, when you talk to him? Never never an issue at Washington. I mean, I think, you know, the, the word more than any that probably stood out about him is a an 18-year-old college freshman for most of the season was – Poise. He was very poised for someone who was so young. So, you know, this is very different than what we saw last year. Um, there was a lot of people questioning whether or not he was hurt, didn't want to say anything because he felt like he was maybe letting the team down because there was so much excitement about him being here and the injuries that this organization has gone through so that maybe he was just trying to fight through it. Um, you know, it's hard to say that whether or not that's accurate or not, but there was other people who thought that maybe his confidence was he looked around and saw Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and questioned whether or not he belonged. Um, you know, there's a, so many theories because everybody wants this guy to succeed. So um, very interesting stuff from Kevin Pelton here on the Sports Bash Live 97.3 ESPN. By the way, the Sixers play tomorrow night and uh, they're in Dallas to take on the Mavericks. You can hear that game on 97.3. Kevin, always a pleasure, man. Thanks so much. All right, thanks for having me.